G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Phil's Works YouTube channel. So as you've probably read in the title, um, this episode is going to be a little bit different because I want to take the time and talk about an upcoming project I have. So this bike I want to put together is going to be a pretty period correct chopper, but I just want to put a funky power plant in it. Something weird that no one's ever seen before, especially not you Americans. You would have never have seen or heard of one of these things before. Basically, this little engine I have behind me is called a Howard. So the company that produced this engine is Howard. And you've never seen one of these engines before. You've never heard of one of them before. And that's because these engines were never in a vehicle. These engines were only ever produced for agricultural equipment. So this engine here is actually out of a rotary hoe. So that is a piece of equipment that churns the earth as you pull it along and that aerates the soil and it makes it ready to be, um, I don't fucking know, I'm not a farmer. It churns the soil and it gets it ready for um, planting, I suppose, crops and getting yeah, land ready, I don't know. And um, so that's what this engine came out of. This one is a stationary engine. So that's the other reason these things were made. So this engine might have been, you know, a pump beside a dam to pump water, or it might have been a generator. So it ran to create power, or, you know, there's a heap of little different things and jobs that these engines had. But basically, this is a Cliff Howard designed engine. So Originally when Cliff Howard was designing a rotary hoe, he grew up on a farm which was all horsepower back in those days, so actual horses. So he saw a future in all agricultural equipment being mechanicalized. So, you know, engines being put on them, you know, do away with the animals and, you know, just being really mechanical. So basically he started with this idea with a rotary hoe. So early prototypes of a rotary hoe were actually with an American engine. So after, I suppose, refining that, he decided to go away with the American engine and build and design his own engine. So this is basically what he came up with here. Now, this engine here, the one that's actually out of the rotary hoe, I believe this is like a 26, so like a 1926, somewhere around that mid to late 20s and this guy like i was saying the, the stationary engine he is sort of mid 30s so these are super old engines um it's a testament to the casting and the materials used that they're still around today that they're not just rusted out you know if we had this exact same engine it was if it was poured and all the metal from today was used to make this it would be you know no longer metal these days is so shit full of copper and it just rusts out it was never as tough it's as it was back in the day you know so anyway a bit more about this engine um you know a harley v twin for starters is a 45 degree v this guy's a 50. so it's a bit tighter in the v um what other differences we got we've got a camshaft which instead of running parallel with your crankshaft, it actually runs perpendicular. So the camshaft actually runs this direction. I'll show you a bit more about that later. And you've got a Maggie on one side and you've got the oil pump on the other. And these are just a pocket style flathead. So the valves are controlled by underneath through the timing cover with the um, lifters there and it's just a pocket style combustion here and this is where your valve pockets are coming out. So that's all pretty relative to like a Harley flathead but the main differences is obviously this camshaft running at perpendicular, the 50 degree V, we've got two side by side rods instead of a knife and fork like a Harley is, so these are side by sides which means they're the cylinders are going to be offset a little bit more to allow for the thickness of the rod. Um, what else? That's pretty well it. You know, these things had a really weird carburetor and this is only for like stationary engines and fixed 
engine speed. So when you have an engine like a motorcycle engine that, that's varying revs all the time, you need a special carburetor. Well, this thing is just so simple and it's just for a steady rev. That's all it's built for. So I'm going to retrofit a sort of period Harley's um, carburetor on it, like a link it. I think I have one laying around. So I'm going to do away with this. That's going to be a nice paperweight. But basically I'm going to clean this whole engine up and I'm going to rebuild it. I've got new gaskets and everything for it, which proved really hard to find, but I got someone to make me some. Um, all the bearings for this thing are no longer made because they're all annoying imperial sizes. So I actually had to retrofit bearings for the rods and a few other bits and pieces. So that was a bit of a, a difficult process, but I've got that done. So that's all good now. I'm basically getting this engine ready so that I can weigh it. I'm actually gonna um, weigh the rotating and reciprocating assemblies and I'm actually gonna balance the flywheels and do all that sort of stuff because I wanna mess around with the, with the valve train and the revving of this engine a bit. I want this engine to be able to sit on the highway comfortably, so do 100 kilometers an hour. So if I ever wanted to travel somewhere on it, I could. So in the front of your little valve cover here, your cam cover, sorry, this little thing here is a governor. So this governs the speed of the engine. So even if you've got the carburetor tapped out, the engine will only rev to a certain speed because the governor will slow it down. So naturally I'm gonna take that out and throw it in the bin because I wanna get this thing revving a bit more because I think the only way we're gonna see some highway speeds if this thing revs a bit harder. Now, from the reading I've been doing and the research, that governor, only governs this engine to about two and a half thousand rpm so i want to push that up a bit if i could get another 50 percent i'd be happy you know because then i can just gear the thing right up as i said this is going to be a chugger this has got a lot of torque and not a lot of horsepower so it's definitely going to be chugging on the highway but as long as it can do it i don't really care i want to couple this bike with a harley four speed so like a jockey shift ratchet top gearbox so hopefully I, I, I know I can get a lot large gearing for that. I can put a 26 or 27 tooth front sprocket on it. You know, I'll probably run like a drum brake on the rear of it as well, like a Harley one. So what will be really cool about building a frame for this engine will be that because this is a, a under valve engine, so it doesn't have any overhead valves or anything, it is super low. So I can get a, the backbone of the frame super low onto these heads and then I can bring the whole frame nice and short and low and I think it'll look really, really cool. So the other thing about these engines is they obviously are dry sump as well. So I'm gonna have to do an oil tank as well under there. I've been tossing up whether I should do split tanks and have one side fuel, one side oil. Because I'm going to have some weird funky stuff going on above the gearbox to make the Maggie work. Because on a original setup, the Maggie will sit somewhere there. And I wasn't happy with this guy because the gearbox doesn't allow that. This is a pre-unit Triumph gearbox and it doesn't allow the Magneto to be where it should be. Um, the other cool thing about this engine is these little arms it has here. So these are actually decompression levers. So these push on the inside of the valves and lift them up because these are actually kickstart engines as well. So in the rotary hose, you had to kickstart these things as well. So you were able to push the valves up a little bit to decrease the compression so it was easy to kick. So that's another cool little feature that I think I'll have to hook up. But Basically, that is the gist of these engines. I might just show you a bit of a close-up and we can have, have a look at the little bits and pieces that are pretty cool about this engine. All right, so as I was saying before, this is the direction of the camshaft. So obviously the crank runs this direction and the camshaft runs this direction. So that means that we have a bevel drive valve here. So that is a pretty unique thing to this engine. So obviously a Harley and everything has all the cams parallel with the crankshaft. This one is perpendicular. So the crankshaft just has a little gear that comes out a worm drive and that drives this. 
and then off the back we drive the Maggie. So the Maggie sits there and it drives straight off the back of the camshaft. And then off the front of the camshaft we have the oil pump. Now this is a pretty cool little oil pump here. If we take the lid off and have a look inside, see it's got that gear there. So when you rotate, so the, obviously the drive goes in there like that. And when you rotate this gear, the gear moves up and down in the in this um, oil pump. So you've got two parts of the oil pump, just like a Harley. So you've got the pressure side and you've got the suction side. So this side is bringing oil from the oil bag into the engine. And this side is scavenging oil from the bottom of the engine back to the oil bag. So proper cool bit of gear that, that is solid brass. So another cool thing about this engine has so much brass. So when it's polished up and done, this thing is gonna look super nice. So brass body, brass cap. So the timing cover, so that is the model. So that's the eight. So this is a Howard eight. And the eight actually stands for horsepower. So this thing is gonna be a right handful. So this is obviously another bit of brass, just a straight brass um, timing cover. And this is the governor I was talking about. So when it hits a certain rev, that pushes something in there and then that does has a little arm that goes onto the carburetor and that slows it down. So I'm gonna F all that off because we don't need that. So as you can see on here, Sydney, Australia, Howard, Auto, Culvertry, LTD. So super cool casting that one. As I said, I can't wait to bead blast all this and have it all looking super nice. So like I said, 50 degree V, different to Harley. Cases look pretty well like Harley stuff. I'm going to have to do something a little bit weird on here because I obviously I want to run a primary and stuff, but basically the same as Harley. You've got your split cases, put it all together, then bolt this crap together. So down here, that's the scavenge for the oil pump. Just a little casting number there. And this is where the bracket for the Maggie bolts. So this is the bracket here and it sits up there like that. And then the Maggie bolts back there. Nothing too crazy going on there. Um, these are the pistons in it. So these are just like a spun cast piston, nothing special. Everything for this is super lightweight so that, you know, it's only air cooled so that it doesn't just absorb heat and hold it. So these are the um, decompression levers I was talking about. So when you turn that, they both turn and then it pushes the, in, the exhaust valves up a little bit and then it's easier to kick when you try and fire this thing. So all the crankshaft and everything is pretty standard Harley stuff. It just has a heap of little tapered keys and see you later. Heaps of tapered stuff like that. A few little keys here and there, but it is all super nicely made. Like all this is super nice. And as I said, it still has like the original red and stuff on it from the factory. Like inside these cases still has the red and everything from the factory. So these things really stood the test of time and are still going today. So these things are pretty difficult to find in Australia. Like I've only ever come across these two and I've bought both of them. I haven't messed around and I'm denied. Only ones I've ever seen I've bought. So they're relatively inexpensive. Well, they're probably expensive what they are, but compared to a Harley, they're very inexpensive. And, you know, just because they're rare doesn't mean they're sought after. So basically, I think this engine here is definitely going to set my chopper apart from the rest because I can guarantee I'll go to any bike show and this will be the only one there. So, as I said, I had to do a lot of retrofitting of parts in this engine. So this, as you can see, Howard 8. So these are the rods for it. And I had to retrofit some later model bearings here. So all the sizes for this was a really weird imperial size that they no longer do anymore. So this is actually a metric size now. And I've had to retrofit and put stainless you can see my stainless little washer in there. That's to take up the size. And the reason these are so hard to find is because obviously a Harley, you've got the cages and it's a knife and fork style setup. This thing is a side-by-side -side setup, right? So both these bearings, 
they need to be able to take axial load this direction and that direction. Most bearings, these are solid, sorry. So these are a roller bearings. So all ball bearings can take axial load from both directions, but roller bearings can't. So to find a bearing that takes, a roller bearing that takes axial load in both directions is very difficult. So I found these ones and they were pretty close to the sizes I want. Like I said, I had to make a shim in there and then on the crankshaft, I had to make another shim to make them fit. But these are gonna work super nice and like I said, I didn't have to reuse the old bearings which are absolutely fucked. So that's basically it on this little engine. Um, as you can see, they are a super cool looking engine. As I said, they are a big twin, so they are 1200 to 1300 cc. I haven't exactly measured the stroke yet, but I will definitely be doing that when I put this together. So I'm really looking forward to putting this engine together and painting it up and making it all look nice again. I believe a bike should have to earn its age by looks. I don't hate people that put a brand new bike together and make it look like an old piece of shit. I believe they should have to earn those looks. So that'll pretty well wrap up this episode talking about my little Howard project here. If you guys have anything that you want me to document putting this thing together, whether it be the engine assembly, obviously I'm going to document very heavily the frame construction I'm going to do on this. I'm going to do a, fr a custom frame from scratch on this. I'll definitely have an episode of that. Anything else you might want to see on this weird and wonderful little project, please drop a comment below. Tell me what you want to see. And um, thanks for watching this one. I'll see you on the next one.